of United Spurs of America, normally with Michael and Jacob, today with Jacob and the great Iggy Prince from Tottenham Away. How you doing, Iggy? How you doing, guys? How you doing, mate? How you doing? Uh, you know, today we're supposed to be recording this uh, after a North London Derby. There's a bunch of drama that we're going to get into. We're going to talk about it all. First, I want to shout out Michael and his wife, Annette. They are on their honeymoon in Mexico, nice. Cabo San Lucas, so that's why we had... There's, there's something I want to say off the top. Here at United Spurs of America, part of the family of Tottenham away, um, we are unlike Spurs in the sense that we have so much depth that when Michael needs to take his personal days, we super sub with Iggy Prince. So, I mean, come on. This is going to be a great show. It's a little bit different. Uh, yes, it is your boy Jacob hosting this. So we're just going to uh, get right into the North London Derby drama. Uh, so... For those of you, I'm sure you're aware, if you haven't heard, uh, where the hell you been? But second off, if you have heard, uh, the North London Derby got called off. I believe Arsenal had uh, one COVID case, yet the Premier League approved their bid for uh, uh, postponing the game due to COVID. So, Iggy, I just, initially, what are your thoughts uh, when they first applied and then second, once it was approved by the Premier League? Uh to, it, it, listen, uh, I uh, listen. It's not just because it's Arsenal. I generally believe that I, I'm completely against it. I think the games should go ahead. Um, I, I, listen, it's part of you know. If something like that happened in any line of work, if your work or anybody, any civilians going to work, and you've got a, a, a workforce that's reduced to the minimum numbers, you just isolate those that cannot go to work, and you carry on the service with with the ones that you do have. And make mm -hmm. the best of the situation. In this particular case, they had enough players um, because the the night before, um, the under twenty three teams played against um, West Ham, so they had a twenty uh, the under twenty three squad available because they played on the Friday. So yeah. that was also could have been you know there was so many different situations between the under 23s and and, and and the first team squad yeah you may have a few players missing because of afcon and covid one player and whatever whatever the other case was you can still fulfill the fixture what's so, happening so, now so for yeah, me correct me if i'm wrong this yeah. is th this rule was in place right should your team or your squad, your club, yeah. should it be reduced by COVID, then yeah. this rule comes in place to postpone. I mean, we That's even correct. saw it when we had the outbreak with our club and yeah. we tried to postpone versus Leicester. Yeah. Uh, the Premier League denied that. Later on, Leicester made a bid to postpone that match because then they had an outbreak and the Premier yeah. League approved that. So it's almost like they're shafting us and then they're rewarding Arsenal. It, 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 to me, it doesn't feel fair. So... Like, what's the deal? This this rule's in place to help teams that are depleted by COVID cases. They had one COVID case, a bunch of yeah. uh, people out on loan, injured, and then they also had the suspension of uh, Granite Shaka, whatever the... Yeah. You know, so, I, so I, me, I just... Uh, yeah, I, listen, I just think the whole thing's getting a, a little bit abused by... Um, it's 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 a, a lot of piss take. Sorry to use the language, but it is a lot of piss take going on. You can on. say whatever you want on this part, yeah, Iggy. That's listen, a beautiful place. Uh, this is a safe place. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, 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 there's a lot of piss take going on. Um, mm. I, I don't like I said. I, I don't agree with it. I think if you genuinely have a, a situation where it's just complete COVID outbreak, yes, you take the necessary steps, and if you cannot fulfil the fixture, fair enough. But how many games is it going to happen where you get a lot of these postponements? And there's a fixture pileup already, Jacob. There's a lot of internationals uh, going on, coming international break coming up, uh, Champions League, different domestic cups going on. There isn't enough weeks to fulfil these fixtures. It's, you're literally going to be playing three games a week for the for uh, it, more, if, depending if this carries on. I, I, I'm just not liking it, and I'm just like I said, it's, been, it's it was there to to 
as a safe uh, me uh, as a safety measurement and it's now getting absolutely abused because you have uh, teams that are playing uh, a domestic cup with a week inside and then and then they, they have a postponement before play the week in uh, the cup game and then <laughs> postponing the game again and you're like it's happened a lot it's happening a lot it's happened with Leicester it, Liverpool have done it yeah. as well um, you know it's it's open now to, to abuse and well this is the result really and see that's the thing is I think that it, it really sets a, a, a unwelcome precedent, if you will, because to me, it's like now everyone's going to say, oh, I mean, I've been seeing all this, the rounds going around on Twitter, right? People posting saying, well, you know, we sold this player back in 2010 and uh, Kane got injured in 2018, so we're going to need this match postponed. It's like now everyone, it's a joke, really. Because Where do you draw wants, the line? Exactly. Where do you draw the line? Yeah. Where is the line? Because right now it seems like it's on their side of North London. And for me, this was a game that I think everyone was looking forward to. We're depleted. They're depleted. Hey, this was just going to be go out there and give it all you got. Show some guts. And frankly, I think the squad cues a break. We don't have Sonny. So maybe we, we do this game yeah. and we have Sonny. And this is a we actually thank them. Uh, but for me, when I look at this uh, this this schedule here, I mean, we can, I'm not going to talk about the Chelsea FA cup defeat too much because obviously they're just a higher quality side um we struggled against more cam so for me coming up on the schedule i'm looking at, okay arsenal at home this is this is going to be a big one a big chance for us to kind of uh you know put our foot in the ground for this season if you will really start running under conte because if you look at it we're two games in hand behind arsenal two points behind arsenal and there's just one spot ahead of us west ham we got four games in hand on west ham and they're only four points ahead of us and that's for top this, four. This is what I'm saying. There's going to be a massive congestion. I was just saying there's going to be a massive congestion of fixtures. And and I'll say it again, guys. And I'll say it to you as well, Jake. If we don't bring players in, if we don't, if the the market at the moment this month is dead. I, I, I'm not seeing anything that's happening regarding players inbound, let alone outbound. If we don't bring two or three players in, we will struggle to make that top four. Mm -hmm. This team, as it stands, will not make top four if we don't help Conte with a few players in. So let me just put that in. When you add to that the congestion of fixtures, <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> and also you're then hoping you don't lose any 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 any, yeah. any players on 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 that journey, it, it's it, it's a really really tough ask. It really is a tough ask. And I mean, this is a, a squad that I think at the end of last transfer window, we were all pretty much like, okay, we are right back FC yeah. slash where's the rest of our help? And for me, we signed a guy like Cuti Romero that's like, okay, this is a guy that we can really start to build a back line with, right? Yeah. Dyer's stepping it up under Conte. We were seeing some flashes of Sanchez looking great. Davies is looking great. I mean, yeah. I won't say great. He's looking good. He's looking a lot better than he was last year or the year before. Um, so for me, I was not completely happy with last transfer window. Uh, this, this transfer window for me, I think if you, you know, shout out Tottenham away, a YouTube channel, uh, for those of you who have started listening on the show because of Tottenham away. And those of you who listen to Tottenham away because of United Spurs of America, we are family. So Iggy is like a, is like a big brother to me, you know, and, sure. and, and he knows more than. I say just as well as our audience on United Spurs of America knows how much I rate Adama Traore. And last transfer window, I was so excited because for me, it was a pipe dream. And then it was rumors. And then it was like, maybe, maybe, maybe. And it never happened. So I got the biggest case of blue balls and it was just, it sucked. So this transfer window, start getting the links, the rumors, it's all happening. For me, the feelings are going again. They're going again. And we're just not getting it done. We're... What what is today? January sixteenth. Yeah. Not one out, not one in. I mean, we did sign someone like a like a young player to the U U nineteens, right, or something like that. Yeah, that's, I saw that's that. Fine. <laughs> that's that's fine, but it doesn't help us in any way or form. Um, it's what we need to do and we, what we need to achieve. And, and you know, and and, I, and I've said this before, Jacob. It doesn't make any sense because even even if you don't look at it from a football sense, but you look at it as a business sense, the revenue that would come in made by making top four is huge. 
and all you'd have to spend is a little sum or, or small compared to what you would be getting back in revenue you're right. you're you're spending a percentage of it to improve the squad to challenge top four which i believe and stella said this as well in the past conte would make that happen conte with two or three players would make this team um it will make it will make this team get the top four because he's the most experienced managers out of all the ones around us and he could do that and the, and in return, the revenue would be massive. It would be huge. So even even on a business sense, it doesn't make sense not to do it. However, like you said, it's it's you know it's sixteenth uh, of January, um, halfway through really now of uh, and mm -hmm. and there's nothing. There's no signs. Even by your favourite player, Adama Traore, there's nothing going on in that front. He's um, he's my second. He's not my favorite. I gotta correct you real quick. Youngman well, Daddy is, is my he's favorite. In a t he's, he's in but a he's my favorite. Team. Yeah, my favorite non-Tottenham player. You could definitely yeah, exactly. get away with saying that. Um, so, I mean, the fact that we have some. It, oh, I think we're all very frustrated. And I was honestly really looking forward to this Arsenal match at home for a chance for the fans to kind of come up with a cool. Uh, you know, back Conte, not to yeah. like a levy out. Like, I don't think the game is the place to be, unless it's like what we saw with Nuno's last game. Right? It was pretty yeah. toxic, and everyone was just ready for it to be over. And then change happened. So my hope was that back Conte, back Conte, with enough time for us to actually back Conte. Because if everyone starts crying, we didn't back him this window, and we should have. It's too late at that point. And you're right. Top four is a pipe dream. It's it's yeah. far off. And for me. I'm looking at this right. How, how how much how much would you say you get uh, in revenue for making top four, for making Champions League football? How much money does that make for the club? Um, well, it, 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 listen, it's an excessive amount. It really is compared to what you would be spending. Because I believe with sixty million, with sixty million on two top top players, maximum three. I think with sixty million, if you think like how many free transfers that you could get coming in um, mm. or, or, or like a loan deal or, or, or even if you, if you think if you can't get them in this, this transfer market, you, but you get a, like the Frank Kessies of the situation, you can bring them in, 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 in July mm -hmm. and bring in a couple of additions where you spend money. I think with 60, 70 million, you can achieve that. And it would be at least a double, double the amount of, of what, what, what you would be getting in. Um, you know, for participating in the Champions League, then you can, you know, then, then with, every, with every game that you play, it has, it has, it brings in a, a certain amount. And also, it's not just that; it's the, it's the play, the quality of players that you can attract by bringing, by, you know, if you if you're in the Champions League, you can attract the best. If right. You, with Conte there as your manager, Champions League football, you can attract the very best. Without it, you, you that's the next level down, Europa. Right. You may and have the pulling. You may have the pulling power with the manager, that may still be a, 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 a forte, but it's still Europa League. You cannot. There's mm -hmm. no way of dress. And then you know, let's not even think beyond that. <laughs> yeah. You know, no. So I mean, that's a good point that you bring up because we saw in the last transfer window a reluctance, if you will, from players wanting to come to Tottenham, not just because of the Harry Kane drama, but because we were playing in the Conference League. Um, and I think right. guys like like Vlahovic and all these other big names, they want to play Champions League football. I mean, I'm not even going to throw Kylian Mbappe out there because obviously he laughed at Tom Holland, our, <laughs> our great ambassador for Tottenham Hotspur. Um, but, you know, for me, yeah, Champions League football would be great. I don't, I don't want to see this squad playing Champions League football, though. So for me, I agree with you. We bring in, say, three guys. I'm going to say 60 to 80 million is the range that we would need to spend for these three. Adama Traore, Frank Kessie, and um, give, me, give me a cheap striker. You know what I mean? But, I, yeah. Then I, then I wouldn't mind watching this team play in other competitions because I wouldn't be so worried about how, uh, how shallow we are in our depth. Jacob, look at it. Look at it, the deals. The deals, for example, Aston Villa have just done. They've they brought in Philip Coutinho on loan with option to buy in the summer. They've Instant in impact. The, the left back, yeah. The the left back, Digne. Uh, Digne. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but you know the French left back from Everton. Mm -hmm. They bought him on a, a good price. What I'm saying is, Three you million. can make. Yeah, you can make some smart 
business deals if you have a strategy. If you strategize before the market opens up and say, right, what can we bring in? And you can identify it. And if you saw the recent interview with Conte, he said he's already told him everything to um, the, 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 the management, if you like, the board, the owners. And he was very clear with what we need. And then he's like, I'm going to follow the club line of whatever they want to do. They know because they got the truth mm-hmm. from Conte. Now it's up to the board. Honestly, to me, that's so refreshing to hear. The fact that he just went in there and he said, you know what, I don't care. I told him exactly what I thought. And yeah. then, hey, you tell me what you want from me because he's a professional. He's a but he's paid. He's, that's what he's paid to do, you know. To because because Jacob, for, sorry, forgive me if I'm. T- what I'm saying no, is they asked do. they asked him after the first month that he was there, and mm-hmm. he responded, "No, give me an extra month because I want to be clear. I want to have two months where I know exactly the ins and outs because it would it, it wouldn't have been a fair judgment after just a single month." Of what you know, which players when he thought, let me give me give me an extra month, and and then, then I will tell you exactly what uh, what is what. He did that. He did that. It took two months, but he did it. And now it's like, now show me what you got. Show mm-hmm. me what you know. The player. These are these are the players that are that you know that, that that I need. These are the players that that can go, and these are the players that have no future at the club. Now you tell me. Now you give me what you know. What what? And this is where we're at. This is where we're at now. Yeah, and hey, I'm not going to bring up Adama Traore too much more in this show because there's not too much time left, but I want to say one more thing about Adama Traore. This has been an Antonio Conte guy. He's tried to get him since he was at Chelsea. That's correct. He's want, yeah. he's kept his eye on him, and he's liked him. And all he's done is gotten better, faster, and more muscly. So, I mean, what, what, I, 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 we need to get it done. I saw a tweet this morning, actually, from... Um, I believe someone was taking what Fabrizio Romano said, which yeah. shout out Fab. He is the most uh, fabulous insider. If you if you don't follow him on Twitter, you don't follow football Twitter. So um, he apparently, I think on his Twitch stream or some other form of media, he said that next week is going to be a big week for Tottenham in the transfer window. Keep an eye on Adama Traore. Okay, my eyes have already been on Adama Traore, who also scored last weekend, who I think is going to just keep continually upping his price every window that goes by. Um, so he, I, I hope it's more. Now, would I be happy to see Adama Traore come in? Absolutely. But is that going to be the deciding factor that helps us get top four at the end of the year? No, no it's not, unfortunately. Don't get me wrong. He can play anywhere on the pitch, but he, he's, not, he's only one man. So we need, I think... Uh, a guy like James Ward Prowse, man, that was a hell of a free kick. And I've been seeing this guy for years just cock rockets left and right from set pieces. And I've been watching Spurs. I honestly, genuinely, maybe Erickson was the last one who scored a free kick. Yeah. It's it's sad. It's sad. We're a professional club. There's got to be at least one dude in our 11, aside from Hugo Lloris, that could, you know what I mean, put a set piece in. And it's... It, it's it's abysmal and the fact that a guy like james ward prowse is just sitting at southampton non-stop free kick taking goals yeah. i mean that's another guy Listen, i would like to see come he's in he's a fabulous he's a fabulous player um i don't think he's the priority in in an area that we um we need to like invest in immediately, but for sure, I hear what you're saying listen he's worth he's worth the money just on the free kicks alone you know he's completely mm-hmm. worth the money and he would add that to 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 in an area that we're clearly lacking because like you just rightly said i think ericsson was the last player that we we probably saw hit a free kick and just a point on ericsson you know he's there he's there you know i would definitely is... look into it if the guy if the guy needs someone to train with bring him over let him train with us and then and then he's he's he hasn't got a club so he can be signed at now, any as far time as... So, I'll tell you this, uh, and and I want to know how you feel after I tell you this. Um, for me, what happened with Christian Eriksen over the summer during the Euros was very yeah. traumatic. Watching yeah. live on on my computer, um, I I saw him go down. It looked like this man literally died on the pitch. Yeah, and they brought well, him back did. to life. He technically, he, he did. Yeah, he says he died for five minutes, and that's yeah. what they say. And, and and I remember in the moment, I mean, I was just hugging my wife and my son, and I was like, I really think this man just died on the pitch. And, you know, I, used to, I was yeah. telling my wife, like, he used to play for Tottenham, and he's this, this, and this. And, you know, it, it's just a, such a scary moment that after that game, I had trouble 
watching a game and not thinking someone was just gonna anytime someone went down i was like please don't be your heart you know what i mean and we've seen in the premier league especially for tottenham games whatever you want to call it people in the stands also going through cardiac arrest so for me bringing christian erickson in i feel like i'd have this anxiety watching games it'd almost not be fun i love okay, christian fair. erickson i think he would bring an immense amount of quality but that one thing if you could just take that one thing over the summer away and i'm all yeah. for it i think there's two things there one i think he he would be worried coming back because he didn't exactly leave in the On best terms, terms. He, yeah, yeah. He, he didn't he didn't but I think, whilst I agree with that, that he didn't leave in, in good terms, after what happened, like you just said, in the Euros, I don't think we would begrudge, on that basis, him coming back. I think he would be loved again coming back because of what just happened. But mm. I think in, in you know, if there wasn't the guarantees of 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 him uh, because there's there's insurances there's all of that in place if there wasn't those guarantees that he could fulfill um playing uh, uh, you know without without any dangers if you like it wouldn't be happening so for him to come back and him be involved in playing again there has to be a certain assurances that the risks are not there however should there be any kind of those risks it better is better to happen where it did, like it did for him in the Euros, then say at home playing with his kids in the garden, then he would have died. He would have, he would have, he would have died because he wouldn't have had the, the people there. So it's not even it's, worth thinking about. It's not worth yeah. thinking about. It, it, he was lucky in a sense that it happened where it did, and he was a, able to get medical attention immediately, which what eventually saved his life. Other than the fact that yeah. as well, um, you know, the, 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 his teammate actually acted on him first before he got the help. So everybody contributed massively to, for him to um, at least be still around. So, listen, I would love for him to come back. If there's any possibility that he can play and, and there are assurances, like you just said, there has to be assurances that he's going to be okay playing on, then I would love to see him come back. I think we, what are, we haven't what, replaced what those him. What do those assurance look like? like what, what does that assurances look like? Assurances in a sense that there has to be a, 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 a whole lot of tests, which he would have already done. Um, because, because every player, as you know, are insured. They have to be insured to play mm -hmm. because if, if an injury happens and anything like that, they are, they are covered by insurance. Without that, which is the reason why he cannot, he cannot play in Serie A, because any... Any, anyone, they have a rule in Serie A that if you have a bypass or if you have any kind of, um, um, you know, situation in your heart that includes having a by, uh, by, um, uh, uh, an electronic to make your heart beat, anything like that, you're not allowed to play in Serie A, which is why they inter terminated his contract. So in, 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 in the Dutch league with um, Danny Blind, he plays with a, pace, with a pacemaker in his heart. So there, in the different league, you have different rules. So I believe Italy is the, the, strict, the, the strictest one in regards mm. to playing in under, under those conditions, which is why you cannot do it. But in a Premier League, in a Dutch league and any other league there, you, apparently you can play with a... With okay. a but, the, but they would have done a whole lot of tests yeah. for him to say, yes, you can play at, or, or no, you cannot play anymore. But he seems to, I, be, he seems to be fine now, so it's... I guess just I don't on know. a personal I'm just gonna, level. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna throw it there. It doesn't mean it has to happen. I'm just yeah. gonna throw it in there. Now I would love to see him training at the facilities. You know, hanging with the old crew and maybe teaching someone how to take a fucking free kick. I wouldn't <laughs> mind that. It would, <laughs> it, it would be worth hiring him just for that. <laughs> if he's just a coaching assistant, you know. But like personally, on a on a very personal level, like I just don't know if I I could watch. I yeah. I'd be I'd be I on pins that. and needles the whole that. time. I'm, I'd be worried for him. And but I mean that's actually a really good point you bring up that like is if you have to look at it from a glass half full perspective, the fact that it happened where it happened and he was able to receive immediate medical attention. I mean th th those are key. And in the Premier League, he's going to have immediate medical attention should something happen. It's just man, I, I I I've seen that so many times. That specific part of the pitch. Every yeah. every game I watch from now on have always just kept a little bit of an eye on because it's a little bit of a trauma there. But you know, Christian Eriksen, we all love the lad. Um, yeah. I per like that's just where I stand. So, I, you know, that's fair. That's on a personal enough. level, on a personal and professional level, I think he'd bring a lot to the club. Because you're right, we haven't replaced him. 
but there could be someone out there that we could replace him with. That that's how I feel. Maybe a little bit cheaper. I don't know what his price tag is, but no, but also uh, at the same time we also need to move on as a club and we need to move on with the players. We we shouldn't mm-hmm. go back. I know Eriksen's still only 29 years old, but we we must always look forward and and listen, I am positive that those players that Conte wants have already been identified. Trial have been one of them. They've already mm. been identified. I'm Yummy. positive of that. It's just a question of whether the Daniel Levy getting his checkbook out and and for me, and I've said this in 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 in, 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 in lots of um discussions that we've had with the other fellow um Spurs fans, we need at least two bar three players to come in in this very market if we want to achieve top four. Without mm. it, I I will stand by what I said at the beginning of the season that with this current squad, we will we will Europa at best. So sixth, fifth, seventh. And you know Antonio Conte on a personal level, he does not want Europa. He wants champions. Of course he doesn't. League. Of course he doesn't. I listen, we all I'm, know Conte I'm, very I, well. In yeah, a sense I, that I, if I tend he's to be back, an optimist. Yeah, no joke. But see, I, I tend to be an optimist, and I know Stelios, shout out Stelios from Tottenham Way. Uh, he's a little bit less positive about hope and things in the transfer window. So I like to just try and manifest hope and, and positivity that this club's going to do something in this next week. Not just a dormitory, but first okay. get a dormitory in, and then second, maybe something else. I hope, I hope. And I saw that Bergvine, uh, you know, yeah. we rejected the bid to Ajax. I think they lowballed us, if you ask me. I think he's worth more than $18 million. Um, I think I agree, but we, we, we the option to buy we, would we, be... We're we fighting and scraping over, over two, three, bar five minutes. Sometimes you just need to get it over the line, get the money, go and get the player, just... Get build there's, some momentum. Sometimes we're just scrapping and scraping over pennies. Yeah, and that there's, is that there's Levy. A, there's a saying, um, and I believe it's from the great Jerry Jones, owner of the Dallas Cowboys. I believe I could be wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong. That says deadlines make deals. So that's why I think we're so busy in the last week of the transfer market because it's forcing other clubs to say yay or nay to that four or five million that we're fight we've been fighting them for weeks about right i mean that's what everyone loves levy about that he will fight and scrape for that extra five six million for his yacht so for me i mean we we got to get it done deadlines make deals so i think we'll be busy towards the end if we're busy at all um it'll be later you gotta you, you gotta be ready though to accept that you can end up with your hands full or with your hands very empty that's that's the deal right there. That that's the deal breaker. You would you would end up with all or nothing. And mm-hmm. I just think that the risk is huge to do that. If you are in a powerful situation, you're thinking, if I can get this bargain, brilliant. Hey, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. We are not in that situation, Jacob, where it doesn't happen. <laughs> we're okay. We won't we we're not gonna be to okay. Happen. Yeah. We need it to happen. That's the so maybe- difference there. Yeah, maybe that's that's the need for a change in the way we operate, right? Because as before, you know, eh, we kind of we can get by, we'll be all right. Yeah. Um, but, I, but also, I'll never forget also, the transfer window we brought Getson Fernandez in. And it was just we like the wrong Fernandez. Yeah. <laughs> we brought a Fernandez yeah. in, just not the one that we wanted. But it's not the one that can know, actually you know, make a difference. My, my fear is this, Jacob, and it's going to bring the whole Harry Kane um, thing back um, because if we don't hit our targets. Then that what happened last summer is going to happen again this summer. He's going to want out. I'm just thinking we have to, we cannot go down that route. We need to keep the likes of Kane, Sonny, and players like that, and adding, not just saying risk the fact that these guys are going to look around this summer again and thinking, hey, here we go again. You know, same mm-hmm. as last season. Why, why would I want to stay here? And you're just going to have all that happening again. But also, you got to look at your fan base. The fan base is getting is becoming unrested. They loved you by bringing content. It's been fantastic. Something's going to be happening. Fast forward in two months. Here we are in the January transfer market, and the whole fan, the fan base are going to be like, "Oh wow, we got one of the best managers we could have got." And now, what are we doing about it? We mm-hmm. have him now, but 
how long till he decides to heal, he will walk. And the thing is, he's done it in the previous clubs where it doesn't get back, he goes. But see, that's and, the thing is, I, I think part of the excitement for me and for a lot of other Spurs fans out there when we brought Conte in was, hey, this guy denied us because we weren't spending in the in the transfer window. And I think once we signed him, a lot of people like me were like, okay, maybe this is uh, an assertion that we will be busy and we're going to yeah. spend money to back the manager and bring in players that we need to play top flight football. I mean, we all know Premier League champion, it, it's a, not going to happen. This year, next year, yeah. it's not happening. No. What we do know is top is, is the fourth place is wide open. There's, there's a few teams out there fighting for it, and we are definitely one of them. And if we don't jump on opportunities now like Adama Traore, Frank Kessie, these guys, we're not going anywhere, man. We're not. We're, that's that's well, the harsh reality. That is mm-hmm. the harsh reality of it. And that's, you know, when, when even when like we were talking about Stell a minute ago, this is why he has so many arguments with people because he, he, he he's... <laughs> he's a brutal realist. You know, he's not a dreamer. He's a realist. He says, I've seen this film many a times before. And yeah. he will stick to it. And more often than not, if you follow what he says, he's at right. the big, and then he gets it. He's, he, more often than not, he get, does get it right. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and he will stick to it, you know. And he says it again. We, we, listen, we argue as well. Don't get me wrong. Me and him, we, or, or we, it happens. But... It's hard to say, and I, and I agree with him on the basis that we need to get players in now. We need to act now. Don't leave mm-hmm. it to the last. Give give the manager time to work with these players. So when it gets to the the fixture, you know, with the crooks of the, of the, the you know, when it becomes the the business end of the the the, the, the season, which is around sort of March time, that you know, now we, everybody's really going for it. We need to be ready for that. And if we bring them in in February, because they won't, be, if they you sign them at the end of the transfer, they won't be starting playing until February. It's it's going to take time, and that's too late. You need to get them in now. I agree, and I mean, you've seen these guys like Ashton Villa. They bring in uh, a guy like Coutinho. Oh, his his first in. game, oh. first game assist, and then a goal, and it's like, or I think the other way around. Yeah, assist and then a goal. Yeah, and and they tie Manchester United. I mean. That's right. They were losing 2 0 when he came on. And he they came on immediate 2-0. impact, immediate. And then they also signed a veteran li- uh, left back for uh, yeah. 3 million. And to yeah. me, we're we're playing Matt Doherty at the left back. I wouldn't mind spending 3 million on an old man to run to at least who knows how to play that position. That's his natural yeah. position, natural left footed. You know, these are, these are deals that aren't complicated. That, like you said at the top of the show, very easy to get done that we just don't get done. I mean, I felt like last transfer window, we needed a backup striker. Danny Ings was for like, what, 20, 30 million, something like yeah. that. That was a missed opportunity. To me, but listen, that's, not that, that's not that expensive for a guy who's proven he can score in the Premier League, especially against you. So Aston Villa, Aston Villa are not doing uh, anything amazing, uh, Jacob. They're not doing anything. They're just, they're just doing smart business. Mm-hmm. And like you said, Gerard knows Coutinho from his playing days. And what they're he backing said is, their manager too. Exactly that. That's that's all it comes down to. That he's identified him. He's like, hey, I know the guy. Yes, he's not a hundred percent fit. He hasn't played a lot of games, but he hasn't lost the class. He hasn't lost the quality. He just needs to get up to speed. And guess mm-hmm. what? Even if he doesn't have the ninety minutes immediately, Jacob, like you just said. He can impact on the game even with half an hour, 20 minutes to go. And he did that beautifully against, like you said, Manchester United. Not Burnley, not Norwich. He did it against United. So imagine what he can do, even if it means he just comes on as an impact player against other teams. It just gives, I'm not saying that we had to go for Coutinho. I'm not saying that. Or, or, but just bring, identify where we have the issues. In, in creativity, being, in. creativity yeah. being one of them. So Coutinho or, or a, a Coutinho type player would help us massively. Identify who you want, bring them in, give the manager something to work with. And don't yeah. forget that none of these players that we currently have in our squad are Conte's players. None of them. So That's we true. need to start bringing in one or two players that Conte wants. Make your manager happy. If he's a happy manager, means that we are going places. And that's that's really, I mean, a great way to just kind of tidy this whole convo up about is you back the manager, you keep him happy. He's a proven winner. He's in his prime. You back him, 
shit anything is possible you know what i mean everybody everybody go on twitter hashtag back conte i mean that is (laughs) trending like wildfire right now no and and it should and there's another thing i want to bring up uh that's going around the rounds i signed it i don't know if you signed it stelio sent it to us in the whatsapp a petition to investigate the iggy you want to talk more about i don't want to speak i I just signed it because it was a basically a big middle finger to arsenal yeah, it was a Premier League. They basically um, signed a petition to investigate the Premier League's decision to um, cancel the game, to, to postpone the game. And given what you've just said, they had, they had only one COVID case and there was no, you know, what was the reasoning? What was the real reasoning of of, 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 of suspending the game or, or calling it Because they want it Arsenal off? to make top four. So, so my, we're that, now... That's... We we as fans have gone on position. I'm going to do it as soon as as soon as we we, we finish up here. I'm going to go on it and sign it. And apparently mm-hmm. there needs to be 1,500 um, signatures. I think they're they're on. A it was at 12. Or so. It was at like 12 or 13 okay, when I signed enough. it. So, so, so by the time you listen to this, it could be done. But if it is not, you can check my uh, personal Twitter at Wall Raven Jacob or the United Spurs of America. I retweeted it out. A uh, little link to sign yeah. that petition. You know what the hell? What the hell is going on? That's that's kind of yeah. why I signed it because sign it, guys. It takes a minute. Just get it in. And and there's a lot of good points that are brought up. You know, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, you look at a team like Leeds. You look at their bench. They went out there and played. They never, whenever they played Arsenal as well, uh, they had a lot of players out with COVID. They didn't bitch, yeah. moan, do nothing. They went out there and played, and they got their ass whooped. Today. Yeah. They didn't. They played their ass off and they they squeaked out a win thanks to a Very Jack Harrison hat trick. And I mean, it, and then there's other leagues like Bundesliga and uh, all these other players or all these other uh, reporters and stuff talking about the leagues, how these other teams field players that have no experience, but they're a part of the team because they can field them. And Arsenal has 60 some players that they can't field for whatever reason. It's bullshit. And there needs to be something done. I think the, what they should do is reward us three points and give them a fat L. I don't know what you do. You give you give us the three points and uh, Arsenal the loss. But but my next question to you would be: Is it Arsenal's fault that the Premier League granted that right? Like if if I'm not fit to start and open a business, but the bank grants me that money anyway. Yeah. It's like, is it my fault or is it their fault that they gave me that money? So, it, it's a hot topic. It's interesting, but. No, Whatever what we can do to screw Jacob, Arsenal, I, I'm for. I think if Arsenal, if Arsenal are taking it upon themselves not to fill the team, and it, and then the decision went to the player, hey, these guys have not turned up to play the game, then they would lose the game. But if the league has given you, has granted you not to play the game, there's really not much. I I, 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 I don't know. I don't, I, as in, there's not much that it doesn't go on Arsenal. It will go against the league. If that makes yeah. sense, because they they fulfilled, they said okay, do it. So listen, we we do we we sign the petition. Let's see, we we'll see what happens after that. But yeah. um, it's not right because this is just like a, it's it's an open can of worms and it's open at, to, to to abuse. And um, right, and this is what's happening right now. This is exactly what's happening. I mean, if you find one loophole, all of a sudden everyone else is going to try and take advantage yeah. of that very same thing. So wrapping this thing up here, Iggy, looking ahead, Wednesday. Yeah. Leicester at the King Power Stadium, and then tough, on the tough, weekend man. we have Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Tough, tough what, what, game. Man. This, then that, well, let's that go one game at a time. Wraps up let's, a very long. City. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I think we can get three had, points we, out of that. We we we've had a we've had a rest. So if you can, we've had a rest. So we've had no game now from from the cup game against Chelsea to Leicester. We've had a we had a good week. Hope, prepared it as well as we possibly can and um yeah we have to um we have to go and get the points because we need we need points we've got like you said two tough games Leicester away is never easy and uh Chelsea Mm -hmm. we won't think about that for now let's just think about Leicester um you know let's hope that we get a nice balanced team yeah let's let's a nice balanced team let's hope Doherty does not play on the left side no more and um yeah we we, we gotta go Let's hope we can recover Dyer because Dyer at the moment is very, very important for us. Um, and hey, who thought I'd ever say Dyer was going to be an important player for us? But he really is uh, becoming a very focal point in that in that in that, in that team and that defence. Yeah, uh, we need. To I would say as many him. people 
as many people thought that you would say that as many yeah. people thought that i would say he's our best defender this season yeah and we're in fifth uh sixth place so you know it, it's all too. wide open and, 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 and reggie as well reggie on the left hand side mm-hmm. would be massive for the, he's got to play because if he doesn't start against leicester i'm starting to think what is happening there why is he not you know, he's, What's going on? Been, is he really he's been hurt? Missing on a, yeah, he's been missing a few games. Uh, I've mm-hmm. just heard today that um, uh, Conte has Endombele playing um, training by himself. So he's now seems to be out of the squad. So he's Yikes. not training with the rest of the team. Um, so yeah, not and, a good and, look. And, no, it's not 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 great. And um, and also the final is that who's going to take Sonny's place? You know, um, in the, in that side of the pitch. You know, because we need someone to help help Kane, you know, with a with a mm-hmm. with a with the goals and all our attacking play. So those are key 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 players in key areas. So for me, uh the main thing that stands out is you can't replace Son. You can only hope someone can do some of the things that he can. Our hope there I think is Lucas Mora being able to step up. Real quick I want to preface uh you brought up the Tongi and Dombele thing. Uh for those of you that don't know, uh he put in a horrible shift. We were down uh two zero I believe. No, one one zero? Was it one zero or two zero? We were, we, were down, we was losing to Morecambe one we nil. Losing, we were losing to yeah. the Shrimp, Shrimp FC, a very small club. We're losing, which is yeah. abysmal. And then it was around the sixty, seventieth minute, he gets subbed Made off. And yeah. he walk he literally walked off the pitch. Everyone's Snail booing pace. him. Yeah, it was we can if you want to hear more about that. Uh, you can head on over to Tottenham Away, the YouTube uh, channel that we host our weekly live stream. We dived really deep into the Tongi and Dombele situation. So if you care about that little French drama, you can definitely go find it. There's also a very I've still good. Still got cold sweats yes, over. I was gonna say, <laughs> I see you. I see you start sweating when we start talking about Tongi and Dombele. And I'm not joking. I really am. I mean, it does get my blood boiling. Yeah, there's a great clip on the Tottenham Away's YouTube channel. Uh, of you and Stelios about 24 minutes just going back and forth about Tongi and Dombele. Great, great conversation. I had to actually had to rewatch it because it was so good. So if you're into that kind of thing, definitely go check it out. Um, if not, you'll be able to see we got a we, you got anything you want to shout out? I know we got a stream tomorrow on Tottenham Away, and yeah, then we also we have to- United Tottenham Spurs away. of America on Tuesday. That's right. Yeah, Tottenham Away tomorrow night, um, 8 30 uh, UK time. That will make it your time. Help me out here. So Jay, mountain eight, time that makes it one thirty. Uh, Eastern time that'll be three thirty p.m. every Monday. That's right. And then we're on. Then Tuesday we're on again in New York. Your show. Um, yep. Same same time, I believe. If that's good. Your Twelve thirty. It's 30. actually an hour oh. early. Okay. Ours, uh, yeah, our Tuesday show starts an hour early. Tuesday's pretty pretty heavy with with people, so. We got to yeah. get in where we fit in, and and it seems to be working out right there. We had a good showing last week. Yeah. Uh, again, for those of you who are listening to this and uh, waiting for Tuesday's live stream, Michael will also still be on uh, his honeymoon. So if you want to go ahead and give a clap, clap, clap for Michael and his wife, <laughs> that's what they'll be doing. But don't worry, we'll hold it down uh, next next week on United Spurs of America. We should have Michael back. Uh, but this stream coming up on Tuesday will be a lot a lot of previewing Lester, probably a lot of bitching and moaning from us. And uh, uh, you know, we, just you will hear a lot. You will hear a lot about this uh, game being called off. Believe me, tomorrow and Tuesday, you will. Oh, uh, I'll be there. If I'm if I'm not through. on there in video, I'll be there in the chat. Trust me, trust me. But Iggy, any, any final thoughts as we uh, look forward to the live streams we got this week and King Power Stadium with Lester yeah. on Wednesday? Levy, get your checkbook out. Start paying <laughs> money. Bring players in. Hashtag back Conte. I don't know how more clear I can say that, but there it is, my friend. I can't agree with you more. Back Conte, you stupid bald mother. Come on, <laughs> we need Conte here. We need success. Conte's the man to bring it. So I agree with you there, Iggy. I want to give a shout out to some supporters of the podcast, Faraz and Pete. Uh, you guys are financially supporting us. I appreciate that. And if you're interested in becoming one of the supporters of the pod, you can head on over to anchor.fm slash United Spurs of America. That's where you can financially uh, monthly make a contribution to Michael and I's podcast here. Uh, we're going to enter in a little raffle, got some giveaways going out uh, once we get a little bit more traffic going. But yeah, everything everything you guys do for us is very much appreciated. And the listens, the likes, the subscriptions, that is the most important to us. So even if you don't want to support Support financially just listening is huge and we greatly appreciate it um but again 
for Iggy, for Tottenham away. I'm Jacob. This is United Spurs of America. Give me some coys. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. We'll see you next time. Take care. United Spurs of America with your hosts, Michael and Jacob.